happened along the way, which I won't branch off and tell you about, otherwise I should be here all afternoon. <laughs> um, but we reached a point in the work that we were doing where we realised that, this is my husband Richard, by the way, who's just walked in on cue. <laughs> Say hello to everybody. <laughs> He's doing some plumbing at my mum's house. Um, we kind of reached a point where we realised that at our age, which is 65, we, we need to start thinking about the future and the future generation of Brighthaven, where it's going and what's going to happen. Um, and so I started my rescue network to help people find homes for elderly animals that couldn't necessarily come and live with us because our population used to be about 100 animals and it, it kind of um, grew and grew and grew. And it was probably about four years ago that we started realizing that life had to change, otherwise we would both be mm -hmm. on the floor flat out. So we started allowing our animals to leave and not replacing them. And I can't tell you how hard that was on the heart. And so that's when I started my rescue network to try and find homes for those that couldn't come here. And it's been amazingly successful. And that finally led us actually into the world of rescue. And now we actually have a, a big rescue operation that rescues senior and special needs animals from shelters and finds them homes. And we have a big foster organization. If you know anyone that wants to foster help, we need it. And so the main part that we really felt was the most important was the education. We'd learned so much. We suddenly finally realized we'd learned about hospice care. But most importantly, we'd learned about wellness. We'd learned how animals like Beauregard here up on the wall lived to 28. And Fraser, who was the cat behind me in the chair, lived to 37. <laughs> so we learned a lot about holistic care. And so education became out. Well, OK, what we do have as a legacy is to pass it on. So there began our education program. And the first practitioner that came along was um, Kathleen Prasad, who teaches animal Reiki. Wonderful, wonderful lady. And so this is bringing me to animal communication because Kathy and I met for the first time as students of Kathleen Prasad. And, oh boy, it was at that lesson that I suddenly got it. And then I realized what Kathy brings to animal communication that, that others don't. Um, in Reiki, you learn a lot about yourself. You learn about oneness. You learn about the universe. You learn about the connectedness of everything there is. And it's, it's the most magical, magical, what would you call it, modality to learn. We've, you know, we've really enjoyed it. Now, what it brought to me was my journey of learning about myself and being able to offer healing that is reciprocated <coughs> by an animal. Excuse me. <coughs> and so, what it's brought me to understand in listening to Kathy teach, she accepted our invitation and now she's a regular teacher here because what she brings to the world of animal communication is that oneness. It's that being at one with the animal. It's not just saying, oh, I want to be an animal communicator and I want to talk to Blackie and find out what he <coughs> likes to eat for dinner. Mm -hmm. It's so much deeper than that. She has a passion and she has an understanding of life and love and joy and reverence for the animals that we just share our lives with. And it's just, it's always an honor to be able to introduce somebody who can communicate at all levels and really understands this world that we are part of. Thank you, Kathy. Thank and you. now I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you.